to get the mind to settle down. You have to want it to settle down. Because it's driven by its desires. It's not the case that the mind simply sits there and perfectly still, perfectly happy, like a frog. Not thinking of anything. And then a fly comes along and suddenly it gets hungry. The mind is hungry to begin with. It's out looking for things. And so you want to make sure you're directed in the right direction. The mind has an arrow built into it. It's going someplace with its fabrications, sankaras. They're all done for the sake of something. And so when the Buddha teaches us the Dharma, he's providing us with something that's really good to do, so, do things for the sake of. Here we are in this world of aging, illness, and death, followed by birth and followed by more aging, illness, and death. He says that he found the way to something that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. That's something worth desiring, because it puts an end to all suffering. And it means not only do you stop creating suffering for yourself, but you're no longer feeding on other people. Because that's what our desire does. We want something and then we create our sense of who we are around that, and then that who we are has to feed. Feed physically, feed emotionally. And it keeps on going, going, going. And when you can no longer use this body, when you get pushed out, you go find another one. It's like a hermit crab. Find another shell. Keep on going, keep on going. Who knows how long it's been going? The Buddha said you can't trace back and find the beginning point. And as long as you look for happiness and things that age, grow ill, and die, you're going to have to age, grow ill, and die as well, again and again. So here the Buddha is offering a way out. So it's worth listening to, worth focusing on, worth taking seriously. That there is a dimension in the mind that doesn't die. So focus your desires there. Now this requires not just desiring, of course, you have to act on the desire. This is why when the Buddha taught the basis for success, it wasn't just desire. It was concentration based on desire and then the fabrications of right effort. That requires persistence, intent, and using your ingenuity to follow the instructions. And then if they don't work out, then you reflect on what you've done. How do you have to adjust your actions? How do you have to adjust your understanding so that you do get the right results? The Buddha set down the principles. John Mahabua makes a comparison with a traditional doctor. They would have a, their basic tonic. They'd have a big pot of the basic tonic, always on the back burner of their stove. And then when anyone came in with specific problems, they'd take the basic tonic and they'd add a little of this, add a little of that. So it's just right for the disease. And this way, when we get the Dharma from the Buddha, when we get the Dharma from the teachers, we're getting the basic tonic. And they give us a range of what other ingredients might be added, and you have to figure out which ingredients you need to add. So it's not just a matter of following instructions. You have to use your ingenuity your powers of observation, because it's through developing your powers of observation that you develop your discernment. So focus your desires in the right way and then act on those desires. That's how you too can find what the Buddha found. <laughs>